Hi everyone, I'm Jessica. Welcome back. Today in the Nona Quotes Along, we are working on basting and quilting our quilt. And you'll find other videos that I posted today that show where I free motioned my Nona quilt. But I also wanted to show you a little bit about straight line quilting with a walking foot in case you're looking to straight line quilt instead of free motion quilt. I feel like straight line quilting is where a lot of people start out. So if you're making the Nona quilt as your first quilt, you might not feel ready to free motion quilt yet. So let's go over straight line quilting. If the Nona quilt is the first quilt you're making, you may not feel ready to quilt it without practicing. What I'd recommend then is just getting a scrap piece of batting. You can buy a small one if you don't have any extra batting. You can buy like a crib size batting and that one you can cut up into little pieces and that way you can work on quilting before you actually quilt your quilt. You might want to just do a little bit of practice work. Then I have um, just some solid fabric. I typically, if I'm doing this, I use solid fabric because it's the cheapest option. When you start buying prints, um, they're more expensive than the solids. So I usually, if I'm practice quilting, I will use a solid. Then I'm just taking my scrap batting. So essentially right now what I'm doing is I'm making like a pretend quilt sandwich. And so this piece is small. It doesn't need a ton um, to hold it together. But what we'll do is we'll just first get the batting on really nice and spread it out. And then, you know, my pieces are not the exact size. Like here my batting is a little bit less wide than my fabric, but it doesn't matter because like I said, this is just a practice. So, and there's something on this piece, which doesn't matter because this is going to not be kept. So if you want to put a couple of the curved safety pins in it, you can do that just to help hold it together while you're quilting. Now, when you're doing this straight line quilting, you're going to have to decide um, how you want to make your first mark. So if you're doing horizontal or vertical lines, the first one I typically mark on the quilt. And by mark, I mean, I either use a hair marker, which doesn't leave a line, if we remember from our supply class, or I use like a water soluble marker that I've tested and I'm comfortable using on fabric. The first line is the one that I mark. And then after the first one, I use, I'll show you um, on my foot, but I use this like seam guide to get the rest all evenly spaced. This is what I'm going to do for now. Maybe I add one more there. It really, this really won't slip. And I find that I adjust as I go. So sometimes too many pins hold me back. But feel free to pin. They usually say like if you put your hand down, like you should be touching a pin um, in every spot. At least touching one. But so let's just say for the, for the sake of this quilt, I'm going to take a straight, I'm going to make a straight line and I'm going to use my hair marker today. So this first one, I'll just mark on here. And I'm just going to rub my hair marker against the fabric, leaning against my roller. And you can see this really nice, clear, when I step out of the way, you can see it better. This really nice, clear indentation on my fabric. Now there is nothing marked here. That hair marker just left this indentation. So once I sew and once this is washed, you won't be able to see this indentation. And sometimes even as you continue sewing, the, this by being manipulated around will fade away. So don't mark too many lines because they do tend to go away as you manipulate the fabric. But now I have my first line, so we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and start sewing. The walking foot that I'm gonna be using is this three sole walking foot number 50 with a seam guide. This is a Bernina foot. So it comes with um, different soles and in the, in the instruction, it also comes with this instruction manual. In this instruction manual, it tells you what each sole is for. It comes with these seam guides. So I have one um, for each direction, which is nice. And then this is the actual foot. So I just took the seam guide that was on it. I took it off because I'm gonna switch it. The one that was on was it was the general sewing sole. And let's see, so this one is a edge stitching or a stitch in the ditch foot. So this little guide will go there and help you do that really nicely. 
Then there is a quilting sole and the general. So the general is this one with this like hole here and the quilting is this open version. So I'm gonna put the general one away and we're gonna put the quilting foot on. To take this sole off, you just use the screwdriver that came with it, loosen this screw up. And then what it does is it least loosens this black bar on the edge here so that you can get it in and out. Okay, so on this side, there's two holes and there's two holes here. You can see it there, see how they stick out? That's gonna fit over there. And on this single one, that's gonna go on the single. So I put the double side in first. And once the double side's in, then I'm gonna begin tightening this screw. And when I tighten this screw, I'm gonna start till it goes gets a little bit tighter. Then I'm gonna pop this, um, make sure that this side is popped in. And once that side's popped in, then I'm just gonna keep tightening till, it, till it's tight. And that's gonna have help this sole fit in how it should. So before we put it on the machine, I just wanna show you one other part. There is this other piece. And when you put it on, this is what helps secure these guides. So you can put in the guide on this side, or you have the other guide, which would go in this way. And so you get to decide there uh, where you want it. Now this screw, when you screw it, it tightens this down so that it doesn't move at all. And to remove it, you just loosen this screw and then you're able to take this out. What you want to do here, because we're going to use this guide when we call it, you want to see how far you want it from your needle. So that's going to determine your spacing of your lines. Now, sometimes it's helpful to do a larger space all the way across your quilt and then to come back and quilt in between if you want the lines tighter instead of starting with little tiny lines. So you have to decide where you want this at. The way to get this on your machine then is you come at it from the side. See this little uh, fork? Let me lower you down. So we're gonna come at the machine from the side and this little fork is gonna go around this bar here. And once that's on, then you'll be able to get the part where the regular feet always sit, you'll be able to lift it up into that shape. And then you'll get your finger back here and you'll secure this down. Now, it's a little bit tricky with, with this seam guide on, it's a little bit tricky to get to that bar. So you can, if you want, take that off and then just make sure your foot is secure on. And once your foot is secure, you'll easily be able to slip your guide back in and just tighten the screw to however you want it. We're going to start with this and I'll probably adjust this to be maybe just a little bit closer. But that's now we have the foot on and we're ready to get started. I brought my piece of fabric over my quilt sandwich and what we're going to do is go off of the edge and we're going to start sewing along this line that I drew with the hair marker. First I'm going to put my foot down. When I put my foot down I want this guide to be just touching the fabric to help me. Um, you can adjust the by unscrewing this a little bit in the back you can adjust where you want it to be so if you put your foot down and then you adjust this to be just in about the same position and then tighten it now you could measure if you wanted to be really specific you could measure from the needle to this to figure out how far you are apart we're just we're just gonna start here because this is like i said not not a real quote but what we're going to do is we're going to sew as accurately as we can on that line from the hair marker. If you wanted to wear quilting gloves here, if I was doing a big quilt, I would. So those are, I find those very helpful. Now what the walking foot does is these little feet here that ho are hopping up and down as I go, they're moving the top layer at the exact same speed that the feed dogs is moving the bottom layer. And it just helps feed everything through very evenly so that everything's moving at the exact same speed through the sewing machine and you don't get any bunches or wrinkles and, and you finish sewing the top 
at the exact time you're supposed to as you finish sewing the bottom. So this first pass is through. It looks, the stitch quality looks awesome. On the back, it looks exactly the same as the front. The walking foot really is awesome at this. So now what I'm gonna do is when I come back up here this time, instead of having a line to follow, I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna readjust so that my guide there is sitting in this line that I just sewed. And I'm gonna do that again, all the way down. I'm gonna make sure this guide stays in this sewing line. And what that's gonna give me is evenly spaced lines. And you would do this for your whole quilt. So if you're doing horizontal lines, you would space your whole quilt however you want using the guide and, and keep going. If you're doing vertical lines, it's the same. If you want to do diagonal lines on coming from both directions, so it's a cross hatch, you can do that also. Um, you'll just have to quilt one way and then stop and quilt the other way. And as you start um, both of those directions, you'll need to mark one line on both of those directions. And then as soon as you sew one line, you can use your seam guide then to mark the rest so that you don't actually have to mark your quilt. So these seam guides are really helpful and not all walking feet have them, but a lot of them do. So I would look around. Um, if you have a Bernina, again, this is foot number 50. It's called three sole walking foot with seam guide. Um, but I definitely think the seam guide is worth getting with a walking foot. They don't always come together, like I said, but so you're just going to just keep quilting. Now, what if you quilt this whole thing and then you're like, oh, those lines are way further apart than I wanted them to be spaced. Then what I would do, because I didn't actually measure this distance, but what I would do is get my ruler. I'd get my ruler. I'm like just a touch over two inches. So this, I would say, maybe it's like two inches and a sixteenth because it's not quite an eighth. So I would cut that in half. And I would put this line, I'm going to put the foot down. I'm not going to start stitching, but I'm going to put the foot down. You could put the needle down if you just wanted to see the position to make sure you were in this line. And then what you'll do is you'll unscrew your seam guide a little bit. You can keep your ruler on um, the seam line. And then you can move this foot over to get it to be spaced so that you cut these in half. So let's let's use it there. I'm gonna tighten this screw back up in the back. Now I didn't actually wanna stitch here, so I'm just gonna pull that up and um, lift my foot. And then because like I didn't sew anything, I can just pull that out. Then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn it this way. Or you could use the other side like seam guide if you want, but if you turned your quilt around, now when you put this down, you're having this seam guide be in this seam. And you're, what you're gonna do is you're gonna be sewing exactly in the middle of those two lines. So, so that's what I meant before when I said sometimes it's easier to sew further apart and then go back and add more lines than to just um, sew little lines to start with. The reason why I like to do it this way because while the basing pins hold the quilt really nice, I always prefer having it held by stitches, right? So the quicker I can get the quilt um, together with stitches and get the basing pins out, the more comfortable I am with walking away from that project and taking a break. So if I quilted the whole quilt with two inch lines and then I needed to take a break, there were no more pins. Only these stitches are holding it together. So essentially it's like finished if you wanted it to be two inch lines. But if you decided you want to make them one inch lines, you can come back and add these at any time. And th there's already quilting lines holding your quilt together. So I much prefer that method. I also find... For whatever reason, it yields better results. So the way that um, putting these stitches in like this, coming back and add this second line, the quilt 
is already laying flat by these two inch lines. So adding this one doesn't do much to change or to shift the fabric. It really does nothing. But if you're at, if you're doing one inch line or even half inch lines and your fabric is just shifting ever so slightly, which it shouldn't with a walking foot, but it could still happen, uh, then it might not look as neat as if you added the far apart and then added the middle. But again, a lot of, just like every other thing I talk about in quilting, it's mostly preference. So you need to find test a bunch of things and find out what works for you now here I don't have um, I stopped over here like this I only sewed these four lines so I don't have um, my two inch line in place but as I go here if, if you wanted to do it like that you would just make sure that your top and bottom are really smooth that you don't have any ripples and then you can add your one inch line if I was really doing a quilt, like I said, I'd do all the far, far space lines first, and then I'd come back and add this. And if you wanted, you can come back and add one in between the one inch lines if you wanted a half inch spacing or a quarter inch spacing. If you really wanted it densely quilted, you could just add as many lines as you want in here. And also, you don't have to use a spacing guide if you want it to be, if you don't want it to be perfectly accurate. You could make the lines you want, then you can they don't have to be straight if you're looking for a more like improv style. Now you can see here that the lines that we just sewed together look awesome. They look the same on the front as they do on the back because everything was fed evenly with that walking foot. It really does make a big difference. If you were looking to do straight line quilting, you'd follow the same method that we just did on your larger quilt. Now larger quilts are harder to mark up to get that first line. Go slow and take your time so that that first line is really straight. Use your rulers, put some end to end if you have to, just to make that really straight. Once you have that first line marked, it's super easy to use the walking foot and just get really beautiful evenly spaced lines like I did here. So if you have any questions on straight line quilting or using a walking foot, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer. Thank you for following along.